Welcome to Photography BB's Artistry Effects for Photoshop. In this tutorial, we'll look at how to apply our brand new acrylic art effect in Photoshop. Let's jump on over and take a look. So our brand new one, Acrylic Art, uh, simulates an acrylic style painting, and we have three orientation templates for you to use. We have the landscape orientation, the portrait or, or vertical orientation, and we also have a square orientation. So there is nothing to install, which is another reason why I like using Photoshop templates instead of actions. We can simply open up the template file in Photoshop and we're ready to go. So it's much faster and much more quick to use. So let's look at how we achieve this brand new effect. So I have opened here the landscape version of the template file. And right away we can see uh, a little message that says double click the top layer thumbnail to add your image. So when we say that we're looking at the thumbnail image right here of the top layer in the layers palette. We don't want to click on the text because that will just allow us to edit the text. We want to click right on the thumbnail itself. So to add our own image and apply the effect, all we do is double click this right here. That opens up the smart object layer. And all we have to do in here is place our image. You can drag your image in from one window onto this one, or you can go to the menu file, place embedded or place, depending on your version of Photoshop. And then just choose the image that you would like to work with. I am going to go with the uh, this image of a cafe right here, a charming little restaurant. And right away it places the image, but you can resize the image at this stage here. So if it's not quite filling the template or if you need to stretch it in any way, you can do that. I am going to zoom in a little bit on, I think like that right there. And when you have placed the image and you're ready to apply the effect, you just click the little checkbox up here or hit enter twice. So that places the image. Now all we have to do to apply the effect is close the smart object and save it. So we're going to click the little X here, close that smart object, and we are going to save the smart object. And the effect will run automatically. So depending on the speed of your computer, it may take a moment or two, but you'll see how quickly the effect runs and is complete. And there we go, just like that. So this is the effect that I've intended and this is the way that I've created it. But of course, we know that art is very subjective and we can have a lot of uh, room for flexibility and further control over this image. So if we jump on over to the layers panel here, we have some optional controls and I'll toggle this folder open, this layer group. We have toning controls and inside this layer group, we have the ability to darken or brighten the image. These two are going to be particularly useful depending on the image that you're working with. So if you have an image that began with a lot of whites, like a snowy image, for example, or an image that had a lot of darks, like a nighttime image, um, you may want to brighten or darken the image. You can do that just by turning on the visibility of these layers. So that darkens the image, as you can see, or the brighten does the same thing. And these are controllable as well. So I'm going to leave them off for now because on this image, it looks pretty good the way it is. But if you wanted further control, you can double click on the little icon here and you can control the brightness or the darkness uh, to your liking there. Uh, next, we have the add vibrance layer here. So if I wanted it to be a little more vibrant, and maybe I do in this case, I'm going to turn that on. And I can again control that further by double clicking the icon. And we can increase the vibrance a little bit. Let's go up a little bit, maybe around 35, 36. There we go. And you can control the saturation as well, if you like. So I like that. I think it's a little bit nicer looking than before. And the same thing with adding contrast. Toggle on to add contrast, toggle off to not have the contrast. It's pretty good with the contrast. So let's say I like it, but it's a little bit too strong. I can click on this layer to make it active and then I can reduce the layer opacity. So I do actually like it, but let's say I don't want it that strong. I'll go down to 50%. And there we go. So again, I'll tog toggle on and off the visibility so you can see the effect there. It's very subtle now, and I like it with the add contrast turned on. So I'm going to close up the toning layer folder here. And next we have colors. This is something we like to add with a lot of our effects here, the ability to change the colors and the tone. So we have a sort of generic uh, overlay color, which is uh, color mood 
toggle that visibility on and you can see it applies whatever colors in that swatch there. So we can double click that, of course, to change it. Maybe we'd like something warmer. We can move it into the warms and you can see how you can create different color moods like that. And you can adjust the position of this as well. If you want to make it darker and have a little color tone to it, that's completely up to you. So I like it the way the default was. I'm going to cancel that and turn off the visibility of that layer. And the same thing with these options here, black and white, of course, will change the entire image to black and white. That looks really cool. I, I do like that. Uh, and then we have um, a number of different color options, 10 color options here to choose from. And just by turning them on and off, these are a little more complex than the single uh, color overlay. These affect the shadows and the highlights and even the midtones differently, uh, depending on the option that you're using. That one is pretty good, actually. I like that one. Uh, we have another one. You can see different color moods that you can pick. So for now, for the default, I'll leave them all off. I will toggle that closed. And next we move into the textures. So this simulates the paper texture. And I think what I'm going to do is zoom in on the image into an area of the paper, maybe right around here, just so you can get a look at the texture a little bit more closely. And if we toggle that open, we have five different texture options. Number five is on by default, and that simulates a sort of paper texture. When I remove it, you can see how it's gone there. And we have different types of paper textures as well. So sandstone, we have a uh, canvas type of effect. Oh, this looks pretty good for this image as well. So why don't we leave that one on for now? There we go. So you can play with these effects. And again, if they're too strong, click on the layer there. You can increase the strength by turning that up. Oh, that's too heavy of a canvas for me. And uh, you can decrease that down even lower if you want. I, I liked it around 30, that's good. So have fun playing with these. Uh, they do add another sort of layer of depth to the image uh, by simulating a, a canvas background. Of course, if you're going to print this image onto an actual canvas, you would want to turn off the textures altogether. So we'll close that up. And we'll close up the optional controls that we have here. And next we move into the actual paint effect itself. Now the effect is um, generated sort of the way that I've designed it to work, but you can control it further if you want to. Now it's always nice to be able to do things more than one way in Photoshop. So inside the acrylic paint effect folder, I've included this layer here, paint color overlay, which gives you a bit of a control over the contrast as well as the toning in the image in one layer. So to use this, you can double click on the swatch here and then you can choose either a warm or a cool color, but moving the uh, the pointer here up or down will increase or decrease the contrast as well. So you can see we can get more contrasty by going into the deeper, darker tones, or we can add some brightness into the image by going into the lighter tones. And we can go into the color area here to add some color to the image. Again, brighter or darker. And it's just going to depend on your photo. Every photo is a little bit different. Um, I kind of like it right there, actually. So I think I'm going to leave it there. Uh, yeah, every photograph is a little bit different. So you can have some fun playing with this. Again, it's set by default, but you can feel free to change that to your liking. So we'll say OK. And we'll move into the actual paint layers. Now, I'll just note the base paint layers there isn't really meant to be any control over these layers. If I turn off the main paint layers, uh, you'll see the base paint is sort of just a sort of under painting type of uh, texture color, color base uh, over which we're gonna lay the actual painted image. So you can control these if you want by opening these up and playing with these three layers here. But again, the intention wasn't to have a lot of control over them. them. They were just there as a base to the main effect right here. So the main effect is in the main acrylic layers. We can toggle that open and we have a details layer. So if you're finding that there isn't enough detail in the image, uh, you can click on this layer and go from 
25% opacity, we can increase that. I'm just going to do it extreme to 100% so you can see what comes back. You can see all those darkness come back. If I turn that off completely, you can see the lines basically disappear, all the detail lines. So I do like to have a little bit of detail. Um, I think I'm going to go with 25 again. And you can see if I zoom in, especially on this area here, with the name of the cafe or name of this restaurant, you can see the effect of me toggling that on and off. There we go. Okay, and we'll go back down to 33% so we can see everything. Wonderful. Okay, and we have four different layers of paint here to control. Again, it's the the effect has sort of been set by default, but if you wanted to go in, play with the layer masks, or turn off some of these layers and just see what the effect looks like, you can get some really cool alternate uh, looks for this image based on what you do with these uh, layers here. And these layers all have different opacities set for them. This one is at 55, this one's at 40, 75. So they've kind of been blended together in an intentional way, but of course you can play with these and come up with something brand new for your own image. So you can have a lot of fun playing with these as well. I'm going to close that up and that is the conclusion of the acrylic paint effect folder. The last thing we have the choice of is the background color that we are working on. So right now it is set at just a very slight off white. We can double click that to change that. If we wanted to have more of a sort of uh, toned paper, we can go into a little bit of a deeper color here. And you can see how the paper is no longer white. Uh, some really cool effects can be had if you actually go with a black canvas, depending on your image. So I'll just show you what that looks like. We'll go down to a black canvas. And if I say OK, you can see how the effect comes out. It's actually pretty cool, um, especially with brighter images or very vibrant colored images. They look great on a black canvas background as well. But for this one, the intention was white or off white. So we'll go back to that. And that is our completed image. So I hope you see how easy these are to use. And actually with these templates, I find that you can learn a lot about Photoshop from playing with the template files and seeing how the layer blend modes work together and opacities and visibilities of layers. So I find that these tools are a great way to learn Photoshop as well as create some beautiful artwork very easily. So thank you for checking out our acrylic paint art effect. I hope you have lots of fun with these. Happy Photoshopping.